This is Amelia. This is Jonathan. And we're, we're the, the Two, two Broke, Broke Explorers. Explorers. You know, personally, I've always had a bit of a fascination with museums and art galleries. And I have just been dying to show you, our amazing audience, some of the incredible museums and art galleries that Durban is saturated with. However, because we only started filming in October 2020, and it is the middle of a pandemic, we don't feel comfortable going to indoor venues, so we decided, let's do outdoor venues first. And of course, we've also been trying to really avoid all the crowded places, you know, pandemic and all. So we were quite excited and a little bit hesitant. Last time we were in the area, we went to go and visit the Ackerts Drive Trail, and we saw this little point of interest on Google Maps that needed a little bit more investigation. This place of interest is called the Sculpture Garden and Beading Museum. Now, we scoured the internet to try and find out more information on the place, but all we could find was a few raving reviews about it. It's a stunning place in an old blue gum forest. You may even have driven past it driving down the Truth Falls Road. You'll see there's two iron crane sculptures on the side of the road marking the entrance. I'm the curator of the museum has given us access to not only enjoy the beautiful sculpture gardens, but also to have a look at the Beading Museum and give you guys, our viewers, a bit of a sneak peek. Well, I'm itching to see it. Shall we get going? Let's get going. It's hot and humid today. It is. So, as it turns out, these incredibly interesting gardens are actually a part of the African inspired Amazulu African Palace. It's a hotel in Kluf. So, it seems that uh, Google Maps had us doing a little bit of a wild goose chase. There is a bit more information out there about it, but it's worth a visit. It's about 20 acres of forests and gardens dotted with sculptures and meandering pathways. I can definitely agree with one of the reviews that said walking through these pathways makes you feel a bit like Alice in Wonderland in a completely fantasy world. This used to be a cattle farm and over the course of about 70 years was transformed into the home of over 150 sculptures, most of which I made out of recycled materials. Interestingly enough, the main driving force behind creating this sculpture garden was Andres Botta. He also happened to be a big supporter and push towards getting the Mary Stainbank Art Gallery going. You remember the one we saw last week at Stainbank Nature Reserve? That one. And once you guys are done meandering through all the pathways and you are a bit thirsty, they do have a bit of a coffee deck here where you can enjoy some light refreshments. So we had a bit of a chat with Hein. Um, we've got a bit more information about the gardens, a bit better information for you guys. For example, we learned when the gardens actually open to the public. Yeah, that's true. So uh, they were planning on opening it just before the pandemic hit, but obviously due to pandemic and full lockdown, 
they kind of had a soft opening, as you can call it, in, what was it, August? August. In August, August 2020. They had a soft opening, basically, where they just opened their doors, literally hung an open sign outside, and he says he's amazed at how many people just kind of pitch up and be like, okay, what is it that's open? We want to see this. <laughs> yeah, we want to see this. Pretty cool. Which is pretty cool. They did say that they will have a formal grand opening in the new year, in 2021. Um, he did not tell us exactly the date, but please do stay uh, tuned to the channel uh, because we will link that down in the description below. Something else that we realized or learned while we were here is that while they did originally plan to start it as a sculpture garden and bead museum, the bead museum part of it kind of fell through. So it is just a sculpture garden. But quite honestly, you need a whole day to be here and just enjoy all the sculptures and the gardens anyway. So yeah, you're is, not missing out on anything. It is, it is a huge property and I mean we've been here most of the day and we have not been able to cover all of it. We've only been able to cover about half of it, maybe a bit more than half. So definitely it is a full day excursion. Talking about it being a full day excursion, their opening times are... Thursdays to Sundays from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. during summertime and during win uh, winter time it will be same Thursdays to Sundays but from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. and it is not a if you are still inside at 3 p.m. you get kicked out it is they just do not let any new visitors in after 3 p.m. or 4 p.m. depending on whether it's summer or winter if you are inside you are welcome to still enjoy it until a bit later when you will then uh, probably be asked to leave. But seriously, don't be that guy that arrives at 5 to 3 and decides to spend the whole rest of the afternoon here. Be good to these guys. You know, arrive here at like midday and then spend the whole afternoon. Definitely. <laughs> so we also wanted to find some clarity on whether or not parties, weddings, photo shoots, that kind of function could happen here. We chatted to Hein and got some answers on that. Yeah, so he said that functions are available, pretty much everything except weddings. He says at this point in time, no weddings. Sorry guys. But parties, uh, picnics, uh, proposals, uh, photo shoots, photo shoots uh, con um, business conferences, um, business meetings, all those type of things are available and are uh, you are allowed booking the venue well not booking the venue but booking a spot at the venue for that same th things details in the description below on that note about picnics you cannot bring your own food um, you can just organize with Hein from 24 hours beforehand and there's various picnic baskets available like we said his details are in the description below drop him a message book a picnic basket and just come and enjoy this beautiful area so they are a NPO or a non-profit organization. Um, at date of filming, they have not set up uh, bank account details or a zapper code or anything like that as yet. However, please guys do keep an eye on the description below. I know we're harping on this, but <laughs> the moment they have given us the banking details for you guys to be able to do donations if you do want to, we will put it in the description below and then you are able to do that. I think also just keep an eye on our Facebook page because we'll update any information there also. I think that's just about everything. Oh yes, uh, we did mention earlier on they're connected to the Amazulu African Palace Hotel. It's under the same company, it's basically the same person owns it all, but it's two very separate entities. Yeah. Okay, I think that's all the information that you know we really needed to give you guys.
In our last episode at the Kenneth Steinbank Nature Reserve, we um, said that we wanted to ask you guys, our audience, a question. We said we'd like to eventually monetize our channel. Right now, all of our trips, our fuel, our entrance fees to the places that we go, as well as our gear and even uploading the, the films onto the internet is all getting paid for out of our other kind of limited um, income. <laughs> Eventually though, we would like to have the Two Broke Explorers channel actually being able to look after itself. So each episode that airs and gets monetized will be able to maybe help to cover the costs of the next episode. You know, the fuel, the gear, etc. It's not exactly that easy. YouTube has guidelines and algorithms that we have to follow. And as of 2020 and 2021, it states that we have to have a thousand subscribers and 4,000 watch time hours in one year before we are able to start monetizing our videos. That's a lot of subscribers and a lot of watch time hours. Even though today we're shooting only our 10th episode, we've got just a few episodes that are live on our YouTube channel right now. We've got three main uh, episodes and one short. To date, we only have 47 subscribers and 30 watch time hours. We truly appreciate all the support that has been given to us. Our family and friends who heard that we were doing a YouTube channel really immediately supported us, liked our videos, many of them have subscribed, not all of them though, <laughs> and they've shared it with their friends. We also appreciate that there are some people that we've never met that are already starting to follow our channel and you know, we love you guys, thank you. <laughs> Bye. And here comes what we would like to ask you guys. Please take the five seconds or less to hit the subscribe button. That will help us tremendously. And if you think that our content is something that other people will enjoy, you know, it's not that difficult. Just hit the share button. You can share it via WhatsApp, via email, Facebook, Twitter, or another social media. So thanks for watching guys. And let's get back to the sculptures. So my favorite part of this place has been mostly the clean air. I mean, whew. so nice to be able to breathe. But I mean, look at some of these epic sculptures that are here. Um, yeah, definitely the clean air and the sculptures. I think what I've really enjoyed is, you know, you're walking along the pathway and they're, they're winding little pathways and you're wondering what's around the next corner. It, it's constantly like, you. You don't want to stop because it's what's around the next corner. It's so exciting. Alice in Wonderland, eh? Exactly. <laughs> Down the rabbit hole we go. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Well, you know, um, <laughs> you don't necessarily need a lot of energy to be here. Today is not a good day for me personally. I am finished. So it's been really awesome just meandering around here. Durban has had some extremely swelteringly hot days lately and that's actually why I'm in a skirt today, it's just cooler. Mm. But I really love that this place has got shade. Almost the entire time we've been here it's just been under full jungle-like shade which is awesome and I think you should know that if it's a hot day you can come here and it's cool. Yeah, Clough uh, naturally is a lot cooler than most of the other areas. It's pronounced Clough, we're in Durban. Sorry. Kloof. <laughs> Go figure. Just be aware that you're going to be walking a lot. Um, I'm up not, and I'm down not, and up and down. <laughs> I'm not 100% sure how far, but I'm sure if we had a, a, a tracker, it'd probably be about a kilometer, maybe two, even three kilometers if you go for the whole trip. So it's, it's far to walk. 
although it is perfect for kids like mm. it is safe here you can just let them run free um there are sections where like there'll be a sign that says don't touch the sculpture but some of the sculptures they actually encourage you to climb all over them like yeah. literally they they have a sign there enter at your own risk maximum three three persons on it 200 kilograms and there's a step ladder that lets you climb onto the sculpture mm -hmm. which is awesome it's like a touch and feel garden not just a you know look and don't touch which is really cool yeah so what you should bring with you is positive energy always and time it takes time to get through here um, don't come here like we said earlier you know five minutes to closing time and expect you're gonna quickly run through the entire garden not gonna happen you need at least three to four hours just to see some of it <laughs> to see some of it yeah to, to, to be worth seeing it um, so time time and positive energy I'm gonna to add to that comfortable walking shoes. Yes. Definitely comfortable walking shoes. Like if you're coming here to do a photo shoot, yes, bring your fancy shoes, but come in tackies or flip flops and then yeah. change at wherever you wanna do your photo shoot because comfy walking shoes. And even though there is the coffee garden here, maybe take a bottle of water to carry with you because once you get to like the top of the gardens, it's a long distance to get back down there. Mm. That's true. <laughs> So it's been a fun day and uh, we hope that you guys will also take the time to come visit. There's lots of fresh air here. You can smell the pine and the, and the gum trees and the air. It's just, it's amazing. There's lots of space for social distancing. Yes, there have been other families here while we've been here, but there's just so much space that everyone gives each other space and there's plenty of social distancing. There's also tons and tons of instagram worthy photo opportunities so you know if, if you're an instagrammer or you, or you like the whole selfie selfie movement definitely come here you can get a photo with ellie ellie <laughs> and entrance is only 50 rand per person that's cheaper than going to your local water park or uh, aquarium i mean and it's a lot more unusual too mm -hmm. so if we haven't stressed it enough check the description below you can contact Hein to book any events or to find out if the garden is actually open on the day that you're wanting to come here and you can also get the actual address and when we get their website when their website is live we'll put it there too so this is just another friendly reminder guys please if you've liked this video hit the like button and, and subscribe, subscribe. Remember to Ow. <laughs> hit that bell icon so that you're notified when, when we post our next video, including the sneaky ones that we don't always tell you about. Exactly. <laughs> ding ding ding. Ow. You told me to bring it seriously. I did. I so did. I rang it seriously. Okay.